Hey, welcome to part two of uh, Mastering EDM with Logic Pro. And uh, if you haven't watched the first episode, you probably should because uh, I'm starting from what I had at the end of the first episode. Um, so this episode is going to be, um, once again, it's about introducing Logic Pro X. And uh, we're gonna, so we're going to talk about Logic Pro X in itself. This isn't really useful for other DAWs. Uh, it can be slightly useful if you've never seen what a DAW looks like before. Um, but uh, uh, this this time we're going to be focusing on the simplest tools and getting around Logic. So instead of showing you the windows that I was so that you kind of got acquainted to what Logic looks like when you're just uh, going around with what you'll need, um, this time we'll be talking about how to navigate around everything and get used to the way everything changes when you do a variety of things, how to find what you're looking for, and uh, stuff like that. So um, now last time I didn't go over. Uh, really what the uh, all the windows are but that's no big deal because they'll come up uh, as you work I showed you the bare minimum and then as you work those other windows will come up and then you'll kind of just get used to them they don't take as much explanation so you just need to be um, you just need to be you know generally knowledgeable about the basic windows so that you could get uh, get the ones you don't need out of your way and get into the ones you do need and um, get started with um, with working in logic. So, um, the first thing we're going to cover was the, the funky thing I did where everything got bigger and smaller in weird directions. So, uh, that's zooming. Now zooming works differently in logic pro, um, than it does with regular programs, regular programs. When you use your scroll wheel on your mouse or you do a keyboard shortcut or something like that, everything gets bigger, or smaller. Now in this case, because we're, what we're working with, when you scroll up and down, it scrolls the window up and down. Now that's kind of obvious when you first try that. Um, it's it, it's it's kind of a given. So you're starting to wonder how do I zoom in? Zooming in is done with these two tools. This vertically zooms it, and this horizontally zooms it. Now these are very very useful because right now you could see that as I have it, I can see first of all the loop that I talked about earlier. I can see the end of it now, and I could also see the kick drum as well as the finger style bass that I added before. So um. Uh, so the, the, there's, there's basically two, two ways you'll be zooming in and out. The zoom out is, okay, I need to find something. Where is that? So you zoom out and then you can see the relationship. Uh, oh, cool. These start at the same time. You could tell because they're, they begin at the same point. Um, and, uh, you could also see, oh, I've got two things going on right now. I could see those two things. Um, I, I, I could tell where everything is, what the relationship is and everything like that. Now, and then you have the second part, which is when you're zoomed in, zooming in is for, uh, when you want to edit something. So like, let's say I want to, uh, figure out where the end of this kick drum really is because it goes through that whole region, but maybe, maybe the audio like ends before it actually before the region ends so it's just got like blank audio for a period so how i'd figure that out is i would use the vertical zoom to give me a little bit more okay so now i can see it vertically that's good but i still can't really tell that looks like it ends but i need to zoom in again using the horizontal zoom to see okay so um I, i've zoomed in and now it looks like i could pretty much just end it right here and uh, so if I bring the end to right here, then we could say that's good. Okay, so I did that. Now um, uh, I could do I, I could zoom back out to uh, start work on something else. And um, and uh, all I did was use those two tools, and um, I went back and forth, and I was able to get what I needed done without having to um, dig. So. Um, now the way the zoom works is kind of interesting depending on what track you have selected. If you zoom in, it actually zooms in towards that track. So, um, make sure that you have the track you want selected before you start zooming in. Because if I click the finger style base and I want to zoom into the kick, you'll notice that when it zooms in, oh wait, I can't see his kick. I have to scroll down. So you, you kind of have to get used to the way that works. But other than that, it's not too hard. Now, the next part. Um, now that we've got our zooms down, what the heck is this loop thing? Now the loop, um, what it does is when you play something, I hit, I uh, hit return to go back to the start and then I'm going to hit spacebar to play. Let's turn this up a little here. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so it went uh, it went to the beginning right when it hit the end of the yellow strip. That's not the end of our project. That's the end of the loop. It keeps on playing that as long as um, as long as we let that loop run. Now, I can show you what happens when we turn that off. I'm gonna return to the beginning. I'm gonna turn off that loop by clicking it. You can still see it's kind of grayed out, so it looks slightly different from right here. Um, but that's our loop. So this time when I play it, um, if you'll notice. It keeps going. It's going. It's going. It's going. It's going. Oh, and it's out of here. Uh, so it didn't repeat this time. That's because the loop is off. As you could tell by it's grayed out. And I kind of explained that a second ago. So, um, so now that we know what it does, what is it for? Um, this The loop function is really an essential tool for navigating because um, if you want to listen to something, for example, the fingerstyle bass that I have right here, um, you can play it and then I could bring it back and then I could bring it back or I could set a loop and then it does it automatically for me. I don't have to do that every single time and I could focus on doing what's important, which is tweaking this so I get it right. Um, now, uh, it, the, if this instrument like drops out and it doesn't show up over here, then that's probably a reason for to loop because you want to listen to this one instrument. You want to tweak it, get it just right. If it's not here, you're going to be going back. So that's what loops are for. Now, the other thing that you should know is they are not for your final project. If you create a loop and then, um, you save your project it does not lock it to that loop. So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, the loop is a tool for navigating. It is not something that shows up in your end project. Uh, you'll see that um, when, when uh, you bounce your first track down is what it's called. Um, that's saving the audio file so that everyone can listen to it. Um, then you'll you'll notice that it doesn't, it doesn't loop with the loop. So now that we know what it does, and what it's for, and what it's not for, how do we use it? Um, now, the I, I showed you how to enable and disable that. That's by clicking it. And um, if we, uh, if you notice right here, this button does the same thing. So you could click the loop, or you could click that button. Now, um, with this loop on, I could grab the end and drag it to make it larger, or I could grab this end. And grab it to make it larger or smaller, or I could grab the middle and move it. And um, the other thing that I just did a second ago was the loop was off, and I drug over an area, and um, it created a, a loop and turned it on. So that's that's probably the more convenient way you learn how to do it. If you uh, if the loop is off and you drag over that area, it creates a new loop uh, over where you drag. Or if the loop is on or off and you drag in a different area, it'll create a new loop. So um, uh, keep that in mind. That's that's a lot faster than say, uh, I'm gonna scroll all the way over to the end here. And let's say, actually not the end, but um, say there's a point here. Okay, my loop's all the way over here. I'm gonna go back and grab my loop and drag it over, right? So I'm gonna grab my loop, drag, no, I'm not gonna do that. That's, li that's like, I'm, I'm lazy, I'm gonna make it easy. So I have right here, and my loop's way over there. I want a new one right here. I just drag. It's that simple. So, um, so that's the loop function. That's mostly what that for. That's for. And uh, briefly, um, I'm going to touch on one other thing since I've got a short amount of time here, and that is folders. I popped one open in the last video, and it just kind of it's um, it's got a bunch of tracks, and then when you close it, it's got one track. So what is that? Uh, without going into the details, it's basically it's a way of compacting the amounts of tracks. So when you see an arrow right here, this little um, rounded square thing, rectangle thing with the uh, arrow, then that means it's a folder and you've got a bunch of these little guys in there that are essentially um, the, they're essentially, you know, one of these except for just stuck in a way that you could collapse it and make it so it takes up less space. Um, it's not, there's, there's really, uh, there's two ways to do that. And, um, it really depends on what the situation is. So, uh, we're actually not going to cover that right now because, uh, that would be just a little, you know, working with that is, is not really useful for us right now. We need to go into the, uh, 
the more about um, you know using logic before we get into optimizing our workflow. So um, the next part, uh, number three uh, in the series here, is going to be on virtual instruments and audio. What's the difference? What do you use each for? And uh, what are the basics of that? So um, if you like this video, go ahead and like it. If you liked it, also consider to subscribe to my channel. And um, if you, you know, it, it, if you think it's uh, if I, I need to improve somewhere, or if um, if you got suggestions for videos or stuff like that, go ahead and leave a comment, and um, I'll, I'll try my best to help you guys out in any way I can.